everybody, it's Tyler here at the Las Vegas Regional checking in team number 987, well, Hall of Fame 987, High Rollers, who are off to a fantastic start. Winners at Orange County Regional uh, just a little while ago, and they're looking absolutely fantastic here as well, too. Take a look at High Rollers, what they have to offer here. Uh, they got a really cool area for cones coming in. Uh, we're talking about some awesome vision they're doing with the Google Coral as well, too. And I just love the entire structure of what 987 has to bring. A few improvements as well, too, from the last event. Let's learn more about 987 and their charge that robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Matthew, I know there's a lot of things to cover on this robot, but something I think we got to cover is what you call the Fool Smacker. Yes. Uh, so talk to me about on the back of this robot here, what it is and what it does and how it's working out for you so far. All right, this is a, um, this, um, a device. Um, this is a device we use for auto. Um, it's made out of carbon fiber, 3D printed parts, and Lexan. What it does is that um, we stick a cone through here, it, uh, and when auto begins, it smacks down and places the cone immediately. Here, here we have a Neo 550 um, on a 1 to 63 um, gear, gear reduction ratio, connect, connected to a 30 and then a 48 um, tooth gear. How did you even come up with this in the first place? Like when you're looking at the game, uh, how are you like, hey, this is something is a must be on our robot? Uh, well, we wanted to score more in auto and one of our mentors um, had the idea. Fair enough. And is that something that was, is this new from competition or did you have this uh, la at last time at Orange County? Oh, th uh, this is new. Um, we, we, wor we worked on this for maybe a week, if not um, two weeks. Very cool. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see some of this in action uh, in a little bit as well, too. I do want to keep moving on to Tony. It's going to be talking about the claw and the intake here. Uh, something very interesting I noticed on here is you're using uh, what looks like lead screws uh, on this as well, too, right here. So talk to me about how that whole assembly came together, how it's working out for you, too. Well, yeah, so starting off, it's just uh, pretty basic, too. It's a double-sided lead screw powered by a ultra planetary on a 550 it's on a 15 to 1 powered on by these two pulleys and well the special thing about these lead screw is that it's double sided so as we intake or outtake these pads go pretty much the opposite direction and the same direction when they close and it's also powered and connected just um when we also run it with the claw it outtakes are our our claw our intake my bad <laughs> And it's just like a nitrile tread here, that sort of thing? Or? Yeah, so it's pretty much the same tread we use on the serves. So it's just a regular black tread. Yeah, that's really cool on that. Uh, and looking uh, from your, your intake-wise on there, so I know we'll be talking about the, the cone a little bit, but from intaking from the ground, is just everything coming through here for both cones and cubes? So we could do it, but we don't really go for cones when they're on the floor. Sure. We do it if we have a, like a drop and we just uh, like to take our time to take that cone. But... Typically, you won't ever see us going for them, um, but for the cubes, that's where this little intake comes in play. So after our OC regional, we we looked into our our pickup and we found out that we needed maybe a cube intake because cubes are a lot faster to go from the floor since they're pretty much squishy. So what we do here, we have like this little passive um, intake that bounces on these rubber rubber bands pretty much, and that's powered with uh, another 550 Neo on a five to one ultra planetary, I believe, and just. Pretty much bounces here, connected to the pulley, and it spins. Mark, if you want to spin it real quick. Yeah, so it's pretty basic and we'll, pretty effective, too. We'll be talking about some of those sounds in a little bit, too, I think, because it's <laughs> fun to just hear uh, as they go through as well. Brendan, let's keep moving on on your robot here uh, and talking about the uh, telescope that you're doing here. And then we got to talk about this awesome uh, cone uh, intake that you're doing with the uh, transfer, too. Oh, yeah, so we'll get to the cone acquisition device. But to talk about our telescope here, our telescope is... Uh, fairly simple we decided to go for a simple design and it's actually only powered by one motor right here the same concept that we use uh, to turn the lead screw on the claw is the same one we use to turn the lead there's actually a lead screw inside the telescope over here that pushes is in and out and we managed to fit in some bearings along along in the insides so not that way it not only stays aligned up but it rolls a lot more smoothly we also have this Delrin block right here that also 
helps with uh, staying steady in alignment. Um, to add on to that, so before, during, um, our arm used to be very wonky when, uh, when we were testing it out the, through the prototype phases. And so what we did is that we added two 25-pound gas shocks along the sides to make it more stable. And on top of it, we also have a limelight attached that also helps track with the cubes that are on the ground and uh, gives our, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, our co-pilot, <laughs> given our operator um, able to see what's going on in the ground since uh, sometimes there's blind spots. And yeah, bring me into how you're uh, taking in uh, cones as well too. And then afterwards, if we can kind of show how that process works with a demo as well too, that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, sure. So here in the back, we have what we call a cone acquisition device. It's fairly simple. It's, it's just powered by a single Neo. And what it does is that it comes right out. Can you? Comes right out. And so from the single substation, we go through a sequence, which way we place the cone. And it comes down and it grabs. Uh, it's grabbed by the claw. Helps for fast transfers of it, and it was fairly effective. Yeah, I was just watching uh, as we're filming some practice rounds right now. I just watched your last practice match. It, it is just so smooth with that as well too. And I noticed that you're doing the uh, prop the uh, door open sort of thing with another cone. Uh, so you're just able to get your cycle times down so quick, uh, which I really like. Was there any uh, other optimizations from your last event to this one uh, in regards to that whole scoring process? As far as uh, the only changes or that we have done so far is that we added the intake above right there, but we've kept it. This has been stayed quite consistent for a while. Um, there has been no major changes to just the cone acquisition device here. We call it CAD for short, but yeah, we kept it. Quite. Let's start to wrap up on this over here and talk about more of the uh, programming and the vision that's gone into it. I know on screen we're going to show up right over there uh, some really cool uh, vision that your team's doing as well. So talk to me about that. How are you using the Google Coral as well too and everything that's gone into it from that aspect? Thanks, Tyler. So with our robot, we went very simple with the actual robot itself. Uh, we have a top limelight as well as two other limelights, one on the back and one on the center of the robot. Each one does its own specific job. The one on the very back will do the April tags. We have a April tag here that will go to the single st uh, substation. That what we do is we'll track here and we'll line up using this middle uh, April tag right here. If it says that we're going too far left or too, or too far left or too far right, what it does is it moves and adjusts itself accordingly. We have a limelight that's right here that's placed in the center. That what it does, it'll track the retroreflective tape on the mid and the high poles as well as the April tags that are on the scoring station. And then we also have a April tag or limelight that's right here that if we grab a cube and we put it in the front of the robot, it'll track for us. So what it does is that during autonomous, what we're able to do is that the robot will go somewhat near the or cube. And then what it'll do is it'll drive and correct itself accordingly over 50 times per second and it will eventually go into a sensor that we have on the robot itself that if you were hearing the noises, if we cover up the sensor that's down here, and it'll make that noise and it'll signal, hey, there's a cube in our claw. Claw will close and we have it right there and then. We're also able to use it on teleop too. And then we also have light panels on our robot. So it does three jobs for us. The first one, it tells us how much time we have in uh, if we set up an autonomous, it'll set 15 second countdown for us. Uh, if we do it for the actual match, what we'll do for us is we can click on this button right here and it will change colors. So it'll signal for cone or cube Tension. for us. And then at the end of the match, it'll tell us our last 30 seconds for endgame. I, I love just everything that's gone into just from the thought process on there. I mean, even from like the, the little feedback on here too uh, for things. When we were uh, talking earlier, uh, you mentioned that uh, that was a great way during not competition to kind of get feedback on like when certain states are happening or that sort of thing as well too. So just really cool to see everything that's gone into this as well. Uh, looking forward, uh, you know, championships are coming up soon as well too. Uh, any other changes that you're looking at making uh, as you get close to the World Championships. We're trying to see if we can add a wheel to this CAD acquisition device so that way we can better pick up for our cones on the ground. 
Well, 987 looking absolutely fantastic here, by the way. Uh, I, every single year, it just seems like your robots just keep getting better and better, but even more inspirational. I think great things that teams can take uh, to use on their teams as well, too. So thanks a lot for taking the time. To tell us about your robot and your team and wish you best of luck here at Las Vegas. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.